Hi everyone! Today I want to walk you through the animation process and the rigging that I did for the Kickstarted video. That if you haven't seen it, you have the link down below in the description. The campaign is still open, so if you are interested in one of them, don't miss the opportunity, go and check the campaign in Kickstarter. Um, the more kits we sell, the more parts we'll be able to add to the rigging kit, that now it's like 30 uh, tips that will allow you to connect almost everything to your animations, but the higher we get the campaign, the more parts and the better product we will be able to make. I wanted to say thanks so much to everybody for the support. Thanks so much for the feedback in all the platforms. It, it's, it's been amazing, all your messages, all your support, all, all the opinions. And thanks so much to all the backers that has acquired one of the kinetic arms. It has been literally amazing. Thanks so much. Let's jump into it and I will show you frame by frame the animation so we can talk about some of the tips and things that I learned while doing the, the animation. Let's play it first. Nice. So that are five seconds of animation animated at two or 12 frames per second that it took around four hours uh, of animation and about three days uh, planning and preparing everything, all the rigs, uh, going to buy all the food and extras that, that are there. Uh, but if I move it from the beginning, you see that it starts by the onion uh, breaking apart. Everything is spinning and moving towards the, the camera. The idea on the idea on those animations is to keep everything moving at all time, but keeping always something uh, that the eye can can see and follow. So we have a point of attention uh, that suddenly it changes into another thing and it it discovers something and then it starts to appear all the other components and they go down and it's super fast, it's super quick and even though it's so fast it's really hard to place everything in place and keep everything fluid and don't destroy <laughs> the food because food is super super delicate. Something that I try to do all the time is not just animating whatever uh, your subject is, but also try to animate the rigs uh, in a way that if they are not needed, they are not in the scene. If they are in the scene, uh, you try to animate them constant so they are not moving uh, in random ways because that will be much easier for the post-production moment that I will explain it in the next video. And that way it's a lot easier for, for everyone to clean the, the thing. And it also it's a, something to, to have in, in your tracking of the animation. If, if you are not only animating the, the sandwich, but also the rigs that holds the, the sandwich, you have more points to, to, to watch and you have more references. This is a time lapse of all the animation and you will see that I start adding rigs when I need it. So I keep the, the space clean and I just add the, the rigs that I need when I need it. Another thing that I don't mind doing is changing one rig for another one if, if the first one is not working and I try to choose the right rigs or winders for every single movement. So for the lettuce, it's much better to have winders because they move just up and down. And yeah, the thing gets complicated as much uh, things you have in the scene, more winders you have to have, you need more rigs. And the more stuff you have to animate, more time it takes to, to move. 
the way to get the nice time lapses that go at the same speed at the animation, the, the trick is to fake entirely the time lapse and it's not anymore a time lapse, it's an animation and what we do is uh, we first animate the thing, so we move something to a specific pose, we take the picture with animation camera and then we fake that we are animating that thing, we take another picture with the making of camera and we repeat this process every single frame so we have the same amount of pictures for the animation than for the making of. Uh, that way it's like you are uh, emulating a time lapse but it's an animation and if you need to, to erase a frame in the time lapse you do it like you would do it uh, in the animation. So it's, it's two, two animations at the same time. The most useful things to have for animating things fly are rigs and from the most uh, simple one like this that it's uh, an arm made of a ball and socket joints uh, to this other kind of more complex rig. Those, those rigs uh, are perfect to hold things in the air and change the, the position by moving tiny bit uh, the arms. The balls allow you to move super precisely anything and, and stay in that place for as long as you need. Um, so it's, it's a great tool. Another thing that it's bigger and it's a more photo based thing, it's like the sea stands. I, I use them a lot when things fly up in the air and if they are heavy this is much better than, than just small rigs. And for this reason that I like that, it's why I design the kinetic arm, it's that you can connect uh, these two components in a strong way and you can hold it from the top of your animation and you have the strongest of the system and the control and precision of the ball, ball joints to make tiny movements. If you want to make a tiny movement with the system, it's kind of uh, complicated because you are moving a lot of weight and if you unlock the, the rotula in the top, it can fall everything. In fact, it happened while animation. I, I try to move it tiny bit and it move a lot because as this is super long uh, you move it a little bit in here but in here it moves a lot more so yeah it's a big lever and I think the combination of those two it's it's perfect uh, and the last thing that are super useful for this kind of animations are winders these tools allow you to move in a straight movement and it's super precise. So for, for some parts of the animation uh, I decided to use the winders, for some parts just the rigs and yeah, depending on the thing, uh, one or the other it's, it's better. Next thing is that it's not only the rigs what you need but also a kind of tip or connection to connect the the organic stuff in this case the the onion or the sandwich to the wigs and for that normally you have to create your own solutions um, for that it's also that we made the stop motion kit but the main one that we used here was these spines uh, that you can pinch things but I used many more during the animation and I will try to show you now those and I will pick an onion and try to <laughs> repeat here one trick that was super 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 easy and super fast to animate. When you use, when you try to connect something like this into here, I have explained it that uh, you need at least two of them. With one it will spin all the time so you need two at least and you can pinch it. Um, let me tight this. So 
that way you can control the position perfectly and if you want even more control you can move it up or down like so or you can just move the entire rig to move it in whatever position that, that you have when when it's just one ring bloop, you can disconnect and it's the same you just pinch it here and it stays in place super easy and now at the beginning a problem that i had is that i wanted to keep everything in the in the middle while i was filling uh, the different rings so i wanted those to keep moving through the camera like this i will repeat it here i wanted to keep this in the center not moving and those ones going to the camera from from so for the rings it was easy just disassembling each one and moving with a rig like so but to keep the center part in in place i needed something better than just those spines so so i picked a disc like this that i connected in the kinetic arm like so now i have a flat surface to hold my core of the onion like so but the thing is uh, in here it slides and falls i needed something to grab it so my trick was to use a uh, wire like so and like so So I placed uh, spikes in the disc temporarily with chatter so it stay in there for a, a moment, not forever. Let me show you the way. So you have you have the spikes there and you tape it so they stay in place you have one side you can do, do to this the other side I did the same with four wires and then I cut it to the size that uh, I wanted that way I have something flat to support the thing and the pins and the wires that will avoid this to, to slide and it's a strong way to hold this kind of organic things and that way I could keep uh, peeling it till a point that it was uh, impossible to keep going. And then you modify the thing uh, while animating, changing little tiny things and that's it. Next trick that I just made it without thinking and it was super great for animation was to have a piece of paper in my table and have uh, my rigs in there so you, you imagine that we have little trick there if you don't have the spikes you can just pick a piece of wire and you just wrap it around your rig like so and now you have the same thing to spikes if it's not enough wrapping the wire in here you can tape it a bit But for me, just with the wire, it's enough most of the cases. So now you have the same. You can now pinch your onion. And yeah, a lot cheaper, easy, fast. So the trick that I was saying is you have your piece of paper here. You have as many rigs as you want. Um, 
you can line in, line in there. Imagine that I have a third one here. Pam, pam, pam. Pam. Onion in place. Great. So the awesome thing of the paper is that you can move now. I will do my direction. If I pull the paper, I move all them together. So it's kind of a little slider. You can move all them pieces and keep them in the same distance and everything exactly the same. I did it for the part of the, the animation that the onions go through camera and it was so much faster to animate and more controlled because I just move the three rigs at the same time and they keep everything in place and I had just to make tiny adjustments because of the perspective of the camera. It's kind of a cheap little trick that you can use it a lot uh, in a different situations if you don't see the table and yeah. There's one more tool apart from all the rigs, kinetic arms and normal stop motion stuff. And this is this jack that you turn uh, a knob here and it goes up and down. I use this uh, for a sandwich to go up and to hold all the weight in here. Those are great to hold weight and to move things in a straight line up and down. Um, as I mentioned, you cannot go up and down perfectly straight with a, a rig because you have to uh, you move the arm like in arcs so you have to recollocate the the position of the rig every single frame but with this you can move up and down up and down in a straight line and it's it's uh, more controlled so those those are uh, called jacks and they are used in the laboratories to ryzen a specific uh, tools or equipment in there. They are uh, expensive uh, as I said and, and not so used. I, I maybe have used this three times in my life but for those times it's worth to have it. And I think I've mentioned a lot of stuff Maybe this video will be a little bit long, but I think it's uh, useful information. If you don't have rigs, don't worry. You can do the same with wire. If you pick a thick wire or you twist some wire, it would be the same. Um, and wire is even more useful because you can do a lot more stuff with those. So yeah, grab a piece of wire. So yeah. Visit the Kickstarter, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe because next video will be so cool. It will be about erasing all those rigs and everything needed in stop motion to make things fly. So it's a really ask video how to make post-production and get your animation clean of rigs. So hope you enjoyed, keep animating and see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.